love cooking and I love teaching people how to cook. I've been doing both for 30 years. To cook well, it helps if you love and value food, as that is where it all starts. My approach to cooking is simple and not new. Use the best ingredients you can, get organised and follow the recipe. That way, you'll be sure to get wonderful results. Scrambled eggs are something that are normally associated with breakfast or maybe a quick supper for one when piled onto a toasted piece of sliced pan. There's no reason, however, why this delicious concoction shouldn't be served at dinner. And perhaps something that may surprise you is that in actual fact it can be cooked ahead of time. The scrambled eggs I'm going to show you are light, creamy and soft and can be a perfect start to a balanced meal. When you think about scrambled eggs, you think correctly, generally speaking, that it's something you're going to eat straight away. The minute they come out of the pan and they form those lovely, soft, creamy curds, you want to eat them straight away with some hot toast or soda bread, something like that. Today I'm going to prepare the scrambled eggs slightly differently, so you can prepare them a little bit ahead of time, put them to one side, just keep them at room temperature, and then later on pop them on some hot toast or grilled bread and so on. So, crack some eggs into a bowl, Season them up nicely with some salt and black pepper. So beat your eggs pretty well. So as soon as the egg starts to drop off the whisk like that, with no resistance, you're pretty much there. The next thing I need is a little cream on top of the smoked salmon. And I'm going to just bring that to a bare simmer, because if I cook the smoked salmon too much, it will lose some of its charm. So just warming it up slightly. Put a knob of butter into a low-sided pan and add the beaten egg straight away. Now with a flat-edged wooden spoon, gently stir the mixture backwards and forwards. So nothing dramatic happens with scrambled egg for a few moments, and that's good. If it happens very quickly, you know you're probably cooking it on too high a heat. So there's virtually nothing going on there so far. My salmon has come to a simmer, so that's perfect. So I can turn the heat off under that and take it off the heat completely, like that, and back to my scrambled eggs. So you can see the way the egg is starting to actually take shape, it's starting to cook. It just starts to catch on the bottom, but keep lifting all of that up into the scrambled eggs. Now this is pretty much there. When it's ready, it's ready, like the ad says. So that conventionally is the sort of texture you'd like your scrambled egg to be if you're going to eat it straight away. Well, that's the way I'd like it, soft and sort of creamy like that. To stop it cooking, straight away, we're going to add in our smoked salmon and our cream. Now, you see the way it's taken on a lovely sort of creamy consistency. I need to take it out of the saucepan straight away. See that? Of course, you could eat that straight away, the joy of that. That's my scrambled eggs ready. Now I'm going to grill my bread. I'm using sourdough bread, which is a wonderful, slightly bitter taste. Grilling it this way not only brings out the flavour, but also lends it a wonderful colour and texture. So while that's grilling there, I'm going to talk about another thing that would be delicious to serve with these scrambled eggs, or in the scrambled eggs, um, if you want to, and that's some mushrooms. But I've got a mixture of lovely Irish-produced mushrooms here, which are sometimes called wild mushrooms, but they're cultivated. So really, I think exotic mushrooms is the best way to describe them. And we sautéed some of them, as I said, olive oil, a little bit of butter, a little bit of garlic if you wish, perhaps a few little drops of lemon juice, salt and pepper. And these will be delicious just mixed through the scrambled egg with the cream in the same way the smoked salmon was. Or today I'm actually going to scatter some of these over the scrambled egg and smoked salmon when I put it on the grilled bread. So, these have been grilling away and there's smoke. And unfortunately, if you want nice grilled bread, there's going to have to be a little bit of smoke. It's like if you're grilling a steak. Now that's beautiful. So this little bit of dark, that's a beautiful layer of flavour. And that one is looking beautiful as well. So, grilling them then on the other side like that for a little while. Again, a little bit of patience is required here. So turn the heat off and take them off. I can just go onto my board. Now, at this point, because uh, this bread is best when it's eaten hot just off the pan, it's that lovely just cooked sort of flavour. At this point, I like to just put a little butter on, or the other option is to put on a little olive oil. So I'm going to do it both, just to show you the options. 
another day, you might be rubbing them lightly with a cut clove of garlic if you wanted to introduce a garlicky flavor. I don't need the garlic here today because I've got my chives which are going on afterwards and that brings in that sort of allium or, or oniony, onion family flavor. So, see the way the scrambled egg is still soft and lovely. And the consistency of the scrambled egg is the same as when it came out of the pan, and that's because the cream stopped it from cooking, and also it just sort of softened the texture slightly. A little sprinkle of the chopped chives. I've got some little sprigs of chervil here, if you like adding a little more greenery to the place, and the chervil will be particularly good actually with the smoked salmon. So that's that, ready to go to the table. So you could describe this as being country cooking if you want to. I mean, it's robust, but at the same time it's elegant and not too heavy. This is the sort of food that I love to eat. When I'm cooking, I sometimes love to bring together the flavors of different cultures. In this next dish, it's lovely sweet Irish lamb combined with the taste of the Middle East. These spiced lamb koftas, which look like little meatballs, are juicy, shiny, slightly sticky, and they come with a small kick of chili heat. Okay. These hazelnuts have been roasting for about 10 minutes in the oven and I'm going to allow them to cool. Then we'll peel them, chop them and sprinkle them over our salad which we're going to serve with the koftas a little bit later on. So I've got my sweet minced lamb as I like to describe it. And the important thing to remember whenever you're using mince of any description, whether it's for a lamb burger or a kofta, is that you need a nice proportion of fat in the mince. So you can see the way my mince is sort of flecked with little bits of fat. The other thing that's crucially important that the mince has been freshly minced. The rest of my ingredients, apart from the lamb, I've got some date syrup. It's a wonderful thing. It looks a little bit like treacle, um, but it's just made literally from dates. And I'm going to add a dessert spoon of that. That's quite important. That goes in there. That give a distinctive flavour and a lovely glossy sheen um, to the koftas when they're cooked. The other sort of defining ingredient, if you like, in this particular recipe is a fantastic thing called za'atar. That was as exotic as Alibaba a couple of years ago, but now it's widely available. So it's going to give a lovely sort of Middle Eastern flavour. I love when you take a fabulous Irish ingredient like lamb and then bring some ingredients in from some other part of the world to add a little bit of excitement. Okay, a little bit of onion to add sharpness and enrich the flavours. And when you use onion on a grater, because the grater isn't particularly sharp, it is going to make your eyes perhaps tingle a little bit. See the way it breaks up to a lovely sort of soft paste. It's really sweet tasting when it's like that. It's fantastic. Grating some garlic using the microplane. This gives a lovely flavoursome puree. Okay. A little chilli, as you'd perhaps expect from that part of the world. I've left the seeds in because I've got a very mild chilli here. Very important, a little pinch of salt and some black pepper. That's everything in there. So let's mix it. Wooden spoon, you can get your hands in if you want to. So loosen it out like that. I don't want to beat it too much because I don't want to compact the meat. OK, so that looks nicely mixed, not too compact, fairly loose looking. Now, what I like to do always, just to be on the safe side, is to fry off a little of this mixture before I form it into my little balls to make sure the seasoning is correct. Because it would be a shame to cook it, form them, fry them, and then think, God, I wish I'd put another little bit of salt in there. A little of the lamb in there, just like that, because you only need to taste a tiny little bit, and I can flatten it down like that so it'll cook nice and quickly. Oh, it's delicious. Really, really good. Okay, totally happy with that. That means that I can now form the little koftas into their particular shape that I want. I wouldn't do these the previous day because of the raw onion. So several hours ahead, they'll be fine. Pop them back into the fridge for cooking a little bit later on. That's my koftas ready. I'm going to set those aside for now and make my chili oil. 
Chili oil is a useful garnish, especially so with this meat. Finally chop some chilies and heat them in some extra virgin olive oil. Do not boil the oil. Season with a generous helping of salt and a small sprinkling of sugar. When the chilies have tenderized, strain them. Using a pestle, push the pulp through the sieve. This releases more of that spicy chili flavor. Add your remaining pulp back into the bowl, which may seem a bit odd. Why bother serving it, you might think, but it adds lovely bits to your oil. Give it a quick start and it's ready. That's our chili oil ready. After the break, I'm going to cook the lamb koftas and make an amazingly quick and delicious buttermilk dressing. Then we're going to get decadent with a luxurious chocolate and caramel mousse. Before the break, I formed my lamb koftas, which are now ready to be fried. I also made the first of my dressings, the fiery chili oil. To counterbalance that heat, I'm now going to prepare a fresh and cooling buttermilk dressing. I've got some yogurt, beautiful unsweetened yogurt, and then an unusual ingredient to use in a sauce or a dressing in this part of the world, buttermilk. I mean, we're all used to using buttermilk and soda bread because that's just the essential thing. Add in your buttermilk and then grate in a little bit of garlic. Now, yogurt is one of the most difficult ingredients to season because when you taste it, you get confused between your mouth and your mind, between the acidity in the yogurt. And you're not sure if you're tasting salt or if you're tasting acidity. Little pepper, like that. And then I'm going to give it a little mix. So it's, a, it's I mean, is that not the simplest, quickest, easiest dressing you've ever seen? So it's just a creamy consistency like that, a sort of a dropping consistency. So that's perfect. Now, back to our koftas. So I get my pan on heating. Again, a nice heavy cast iron pan would be my frying pan of choice here. OK, a little olive oil. I don't need to put too much olive oil into the pan because there's a little bit of fat in the koftas and that's going to be released out and that's going to help to grease the pan as well. You can see my pan is nice and hot. That is really important. So don't overfill the frying pan ever. Better to do them in two batches than to overfill the pan and bring the temperature of the pan down too much and have them to stewing on you. Let's give them a little shake like that. So I'm going to leave them alone, even though I've been shaking them a little bit. I don't want to shake them too much because I do want a lovely slight light caramelization or color to build up on the outside. While they are frying, and I'm going to keep a fairly close eye on them, I'm going to just deal with my hazelnuts, okay? So remember, we roasted the hazelnuts in the oven for about 10 minutes to increase the flavor and also to help us to remove the skins. And I don't bother putting them into a tea towel. I just take them in my hand like that, give them a good rub between my two hands. So I'm just going to decant them into that little bowl there and just look back at my koftas. Okay, so turning them over. So the date syrup is what gives them the lovely rich color on the outside. Just turn the heat down, nice and low, because we do want them to cook through. I'm going to serve these family styles. You see, I've got a beautiful big dish here. You can do individual plates with them if you want to. Lay down a bed of fragrant rocket leaves and then drizzle over your buttermilk dressing. Already, this is starting to look like something that might taste quite nice. Next thing are the koftas. You can see the way the lovely um, syrupy glaze that's been formed by the date syrup. And that's what gives them that sort of lustrous shine. And the colour of those, for me, is just perfect. Hazelnuts, just a gentle but thorough sort of sprinkle around the edge. A little of our chilli oil and also some of the little chilli pieces. And they sort of stain the yogurt dressing and the salad. Don't overdo it with the chilli. It's all about a balance of flavour. So a little bit of spiky heat being tempered by the roast of the hazelnut, the sweetness of the meat and so on. That's it. And the only final little thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pinch of cumin on. And I have some cumin which I roasted already and I have ground. 
and just think of the cumin in a little bit like the way you think about a little final little sprinkling of salt. And that's it. Lovely flavours, textures, colours, different food cultures, all in one place. I think this is just lovely. Chocolate is almost universally popular, but it's also an ingredient that needs to be carefully handled, as it can be temperamental. Don't let that put you off, as a good chocolate pudding is really magical. This chocolate and caramel mousse is rich, as you'd expect, but the texture and the flavour are enhanced by the addition of the burnt sugar caramel, making it perhaps a more grown-up dessert. This is a fairly labour-intensive finale to a meal, but of course it can be made a day or two ahead, which helps you to get organised. There are hundreds of different recipes for chocolate mousse and almost everybody has their own favourite one. I have a favourite one as well and it's this one which is a chocolate and caramel mousse. To start the mousse I'm melting in the chocolate with a little bit of butter. I'm using normal Irish salty butter. You could use unsalted butter if you want to. I find in the case of chocolate mousse the salty Irish butter which I love brings out the flavour of the chocolate a little bit more. The other thing we need to get going is our caramel. Add water to the sugar and place over a gentle heat. The key here, if possible, is to ensure that the sugar dissolves before the water comes to the boil. That makes, you, makes it less likely for you to have crystals in the caramel. So I stir it a few times, not all of the time, while it's coming up to the boil, just to encourage the sugar to dissolve. The next stage is to prepare my eggs. So I'm going to put my egg yolks into one bowl and my egg, egg whites into another. The better the quality your eggs are, um, the more delicious the mousse is going to be. It's as simple as that. So, whoops, whoops, careful. Just got away with that. Whisk your egg yolks for about 10 minutes, but don't wander off and forget about your caramel. Now this is at a crucial stage here in the saucepan. The sugar and water is starting to caramelize, and this is the stage that if you'd left your wooden spoon in there, you'd be tempted to stir it. That would be a fiasco, because the cold spoon would block the caramel. So swirl the pan to and fro like that gently. Conventionally, the color that's in there now, that is pretty much the color of a normal caramel sauce. Here, we want a burnt caramel, because with the sugar, we burn it to get a bit of bitterness. That's good bitterness in there, so it just isn't an onslaught of sweetness. It's the lovely caramel flavor as well. So you need to be a little bit brave with this. See where we are now? Okay, that's what I'm after. That really dark, it's like the deepest, deepest chestnut color. And you see a different sort of smoke starting to come out of the pan. Have your water to stop it cooking ready. Now, a little slightly volcanic explosion. And you see what happens. You get two different consistencies. You've got the thin water we've just poured on. It almost sort of sits on top of the caramel. Again, don't be tempted to stir it swirl it like that. But because we're making a mousse, we need to cook the caramel further now until it's thick. Okay, I think it's there at this stage. Yeah, the drops are falling off the spoon more slowly because the caramel has become thicker. And if you leave it there for a moment, you'll see the finest little thread of caramel just starting to develop. So straight away with the machine running onto the egg yolks. Pour it onto the side of the bowl, not onto the whisk. If you pour it onto the whisk, it's going to shoot all the way around the side of the bowl and stick there where you want it down in the egg yolks. Okay, when you've done that, when you get the caramel in the, onto the egg yolks, you can take a sigh of relief. That's the dangerous part over. Turn the machine back on and we're going to let it whisk for about 10 minutes. Now, my mousse has been beating for about 10 minutes or so, and it is ready. And this has developed into a beautiful, rich, creamy, quite thick mousse. Actually, in this case, it's one of those mousses that if you make a figure of eight on it, it holds the figure of eight. OK, that's lovely. The, lovely, the smell of the caramel is really rich and delicious. Now I'm ready to fold in my chocolate. So remember, we melted the chocolate and the butter together nice and gently. And you see the bits come together into a lovely, sort of smooth, sort of mass like that. Perfect. 
a little vanilla extract. Again, extract rather than essence, so that we get that lovely pure flavour. So mix the two together and you'll see the most beautiful combinations of colours when we swirl the dark brown chocolate into the um, paler caramel. It's kind of chocolate and caramel heaven. Now, this moment when you get that fabulous sort of swirls. Make sure all of the chocolate has been blended into the caramel so you get this single colour before you fold in the egg whites. So it just takes a little bit of work on this, but it's kind of fun work. Right around the side of the bowl as well, so you haven't missed a single thing. That's lovely. Okay, now we have a lovely single colour there. Final thing that we need to do here is add in our egg whites. When I'm folding egg whites into a mixture like this, a sort of a heavy mixture, I like to take a portion of the egg white first and just stir it in. And that softens this mixture in preparation for the more, the volume, the bigger volume of the egg white. This requires some robust arm work. Once the first amount of egg white has been incorporated, you're ready to add the rest. Now continue to fold in until every last drop has been absorbed. This takes a moment or two because I don't want to have any of the unmixed bits of egg white uh, visible in the finished mousse because it just doesn't taste nice and it certainly doesn't look good. And then every now and then I like to give the bowl a 360 degree run around the edge like that. Okay, that's it. Can you see the way it's slightly, sort of almost sticky looking like that? That's exactly the consistency I want. So that's ready. Into my serving bowl. Now I'm rather using a rather old fashioned um, serving dish. And you don't end up with a lot of mousse, but this is very rich. So um, small portions. So that's that. Now I put it into the fridge until it gets nice and firm. So I'll just do one little single serving. So a spoon of the mousse, and I don't get any way chefy or anything about this, just drop a spoon like that. Then pour on the cream, not too much, just like that. A little extra caramel sauce. And then if you wish, a few raspberries. So rich, delicious, easy to make ahead, full of really valuable techniques from the point of view of learning about making caramel, about making an egg mousse, about folding them in. It's a rich, delicious, proper, no-holds-barred chocolate caramel experience. I hope you enjoy it.